Hello and welcome to the first edition of Currently in Quincy for the year 2020. Happy New Year. I'm Joe Catalano. And on today's program, we will chat with Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch as he prepares to deliver his inaugural address on Monday. We'll get a little preview and a look ahead too. First though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, kind of cloudy out there. It's 46 degrees right now. Could see some off and on showers throughout the afternoon. Pretty mild though, with a high up around 50 degrees. Not too chilly tonight with a lingering shower. Lows will drop off into the lower 40s. Kind of a mixed weekend. I think tomorrow is the wetter of the uh, two days with some off and on showers in the afternoon through tomorrow night. Could be a little wet out at Gillette Stadium tomorrow night. Temperatures in the mid 40s dropping off into the mid 30s tomorrow night. Much nicer on Sunday. Kind of brisk though. The wind will be busy. Sunday's highs only in the upper 30s and still pretty quiet on Monday. Sun and clouds a high Monday around 40 degrees. Right now we have a kind of a damp 46 in Quincy. In the news today, plans for a new Quincy police station are moving forward. The city is in the process of negotiating the purchase of five properties around that C Street location for the new police station and a new parking garage. The city council recently did approve $32 million to fund the purchases, the demolition and the design of the new public safety complex. That location is in Ward 1 and Councillor Dave McCarthy fully supports the plan. Uh, as everybody has said, uh, we're way overdue down there and we're way overdue with our firehouses, not just headquarters, but it's a good start with headquarters to go after that uh, piece of land that's been sitting there. And probably um, when you look at it, if it's designed correctly, which I know we've seen it, that uh, it's great to exit and, you know, an entrance and an exit and be able to pull right out. So, but the numbers do, I think a lot of people, you know, and I, you know, you can't really compare the, the school numbers. Well, I know we've done a lot of schools, but um, it adds up quick. And, um, you know, we want the kids to have the best. So we try to go after the best. And I think the folks in Quincy want the police to have the best and the fire to have the best. And it's part of... Uh, you know, one of the things that makes the city go round and round, it's great services that we have in, in, in public safety. So uh, to end up with, um, with a police station of public safety and with, uh, with that piece of uh, land um, that would develop into a new headquarters for the fire folks, um, I think it, it lines up uh, in the ballpark, even though uh, some folks you know, always have sticker shock. City will acquire Father Bill's homeless shelter, the Quincy Animal Shelter, the Stop and Shop gas station, and some other properties on Broad and Field Streets, plus that parcel across from Fire Headquarters on Quincy Avenue for a future new fire station. Officials hope the new police station can be completed by early 2024 at the latest. Now that a proposal for a controversial new housing development at the site of the former Quincy Medical Center on Whitwell Street has been approved, the developer says they will work to become good neighbors. Speaking on this program recently, Chris Reel from Fox Rock Properties of Quincy acknowledged that the development called Ashler Park was not fully supported by the neighborhood, but said he believed it will improve that area. Because I think the, the first thing that we heard was, you know, Glendale Park, and that is a part of the property. And it's kind of isolated and only down on Glendale. Yeah. So that, because that was the first thing we heard, and because green space and open space is such a central part of, of any good development, it was trying to find ways to enhance that open space as opposed to just confining it into the kind of one acre that mm -hmm. is, is, is Glendale Park. So. The, the entire site plan and development plan kind of has that continuance of Glendale Park all the way down and up through to Whitwell, which I think will really activate the site for folks in the surrounding neighborhood. Planning board did approve 465 units in seven separate buildings and keeping the original administration building to be used as a community center. Opponents had argued that the project was too dense and would create disruptive traffic and noise in that area. Real said he hoped groundbreaking on the project would take place this year. 
Inauguration ceremonies will take place on Monday at 10 a.m. in the Great Hall at Quincy City Hall. Mayor Thomas Koch says there will actually be two separate celebrations. Yes, um, looking forward to that. It's uh, under the chatter. It's the first Monday of January, mm -hmm. so Monday, January 6th at 10 o'clock. It's open to the public. We'll be in the Great Hall at the Old Town Hall at the James McIntyre Government Center. Uh, I will take my oath and deliver the uh, inauguration message, and then the city council will take their oath, elect a new president, and uh, and then the business will be suspended from there. Then that evening on the 6th, we'll be at the Quincy Marriott. We have a 14-piece band uh, going to celebrate. You know, the, the uh, typical you know transition. It's not really a transition of government, but mm -hmm. it's a time to celebrate as a community. We come together, so... Uh, yeah, that's open to the public as well. Uh, there'll be obviously food refreshments and, and some great entertainment up there that night. And then Wednesday, January 8th, is when the school committee members will be sworn in, the three members, two returning and one new one. Although he's returning as well, Frank Sintor. That's right. And what else is he served? <laughs> uh, we will hold that at the Cardington Building in the headquarters of the school department. Um, but, of course, all the school committee will be, you know, are invited to the inauguration piece as well. So. Should be a fun week and uh, good for the city and good for good for the stability of our government. Koch will become the longest serving mayor in Quincy's history when he takes the oath of office as he enters his sixth term and his second four year term. At large, Councilor Nita Lang is expected to be elected the next city council president. Monday also marks the return of Chuck Phelan as the Ward 5 city councilor. Phelan won that seat, being vacated by Kirsten Hughes. During the last council meeting in December, Hughes offered her goodbye message. I want to thank my family and all the friends who have supported me. Uh, Paul Burke, Tom Mead, people who have walked the wards with me, who have um, been great resources for me, and uh, countless, again, friends and family who've always uh, helped me. And, of course, it goes without saying that I am most grateful for um, my, my kids, my husband, who have given me the time and attention to, to be able to come here and, and do this work. And of course, my mom, who um, I would always <laughs> mention, most people always knew my mom before they ever knew me. And um, she was a, a, you know, a very beloved teacher. I know we had the teachers here earlier. And uh, I'm really um, grateful for her support. And, um, I just want to finish by saying I know Chuck Phelan is uh, taking over, and he is uh, going to need uh, a lot of a, a lot of support and a, and a lot of love um, from from the ward because there are a lot of things going on in the city. It's an exciting time in this city, and um, and I know Chuck is is the person to move. Um, the city forward and to to move all the folks there. So I'm 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 excited as a resident of Ward Five that he's going to be uh, leading us in the next couple of years. Um, and with that, I just want to wish the residents of the city, um, wish the residents of the ward a great Christmas and encourage them to support this city um, because we all call this home. And again, there are different ways of. Um, getting there and, and achieving the result that I know we all want to be a great place to work and live. Um, but everyone who participates in city government, everybody who's up here, and certainly everybody that, that comes to your door and um, provides you those services cares about this city. So I want to wish luck to everyone here at the city, the staff, and also the residents. So thank you very much for putting up with me over the last couple of years. <laughs> Hughes was first elected Ward 5 Councilor in 2011. She also stepped down last year as Chairwoman of the State Republican Party and was recently appointed to the Clerk Magistrate's position in the Stoughton District Courts. Now that you're up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. It starts with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. Then at 6 p.m., Sound Advice with Attorney Tom Williams. Hello, folks. I am Attorney Tom Williams, and welcome to Sound Advice. 6.30, currently in Quincy, the interviews. We feature the new president of Eastern Nazarene College tonight. 
At 7 o'clock, Quincy High takes on Weymouth Girls Basketball back on December 28th. Navigate Your Financial Future, Episode 2, tonight at 8 on Channel 8. Then at 9 o'clock, it's Quincy in Focus, 2019, The Year in Review. At 11 o'clock, Democracy Now. Check out Channel 9 every day. You'll learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. All starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. Six o'clock, a QA TV classic. It's a look back, a drive down memory lane. FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30, tonight's topic, macular degeneration. And at the library concert tonight at 7, featuring the Golden Lane Trio. Then at 8.15, Good Deeds, the rededication of the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds building. In the Know at 8.30, featuring Norfolk County Sheriff Jerry McDermott. 9 o'clock, Crime Watch with Quincy Police Lieutenant Dan Minton. Timely topic tonight, fitness centers. And find out what's happening at your library for the month of January at 9.30. Get a complete program schedule on our website. Go to QATV.org and just click on Program Schedule. Also, do remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we sit down and have a chat with Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch. That's next. Welcome back. We're so pleased to welcome to the first program for the new year, Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch, stopping by to give us a little preview into what you might hear during his inaugural address coming up on Monday. Mayor, Happy New Year. Same to you, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you for coming over. Really appreciate it. Signing some documents yesterday, trying to get used to putting that 20 in. Exactly. Uh, Don't abbreviate it, we're told, because it can be forged. Uh, you could add numbers okay. after it or before it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it can make it 1820 or 1920. <laughs> the so, roaring 20s. Exactly, yeah. So 2020 is the way we're supposed to write it out gotcha. now. How were your uh, holidays? Very nice, Good. very nice. It was uh, it was awesome. My family was together. Yeah. Uh, my son Tom was in the Marine Corps, was home with us, so uh, that made it all worthwhile. Absolutely. Yeah. The best gift you could have, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No question. So here we are on the uh, eve of uh, your inaugural, about to become the longest serving mayor in the city's history. Don't jinx me. Yeah. <laughs> I like to take the, the oath, Joe. Anything could happen over the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope everything goes smoothly. Um, <laughs> Do you think about that at all? I mean, was that ever coming into your really mind? I really don't. No? I really don't. I, I've often said I take one term at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, it's important we, we look at the past a bit, uh, recognize where we've been, uh, but it's more important to me where we're going. Uh, that's usually, I, I'm always very critical of myself. I'm always looking at how can we do better? Mm. What's next? Uh, so I'm always a few... Uh, spots down the board, if you will, um, on that stuff. So I'm, I'm, I really don't take too much time to pause and, and uh, look at the circumstances. I guess it's a great honor. I, sure. I certainly don't want to make light of it. Yeah. Um, the people of the city have, have given me a tremendous opportunity to serve in this position. Uh, I'm only the 33rd person to do it hmm. since, uh, since 1888, 1889. Charles Porter was the first mayor, so it is special. I certainly recognize that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to the people for giving me that opportunity to, and privilege to serve. And uh, you know, we're we're very fortunate uh, serving with a lot of good people in government. Um, I guess what I'm most proud of is the relationships we've built and maintain. Uh, and you know, when we're working well together, we get things done, and that's what the public expects of us. And I think we're doing it pretty well locally. Four years ago. Um have you achieved the goals that you, you hoped to uh, up to this point? Um, I, I think we've, we've come a long way. Yeah. Um, I'm generally aggressive. I know I drive my staff crazy. <laughs> um, uh, but, I, you know, we've, we've seen substantial progress, and, and I hear that from people. Um, some people don't like change. I get that. Uh, but for the most part, we're a city on the move. We're, we're, we're really capturing the value that we have here. 
Um, I think Quincy was the best kept secret for a long time mm -hmm. in the greater Boston region. I think the secret's been out for some time. We're seeing incredible, unprecedented investment in our city. Uh, and that's good news. It's good news for our economy. It's good news for jobs, for people. Uh, it's good news for tax revenue. Uh, and I think good news for the quality of life. What are you hearing from uh, your colleagues in other comparable cities, say, I don't know, the Gloucesters, maybe the Brocktons or New Yeah, Bedford's? I mean, you know, let's, let's be honest. I mean, we're part of that ring of value being in part of the greater Boston area, sure. right? So that, that's where the economic strength is or the economic engine of the state. Uh, we're, we're right next door. You know, the old saying, uh, strength is our weakness. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's things that uh, come with it being next to Boston, yeah. like the cut through traffic, which is, which is not fun. Um, however, the, the value that we have, uh, when you look at the unprecedented growth, uh, some of these old cities would like to have a piece of it, Joe. I mean, they, uh, you know, the, you mentioned the, you know, the Brocktons and, and the Glossus and Haverhills, the old cities, a lot of them are hurting big time, yes. uh, struggling just to maintain operating budgets, not even attempting to do any major new projects at all. And, um, you know, so we got to take advantage of this. Who knows how long the market will last. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I like to remind people, they say, well, where's my... My tax money going with all this new development. Well, we, we, we say, um, and, and we can back it up with facts, we fall in the middle on taxes. We're really in the middle of the pack in the state. Yet, I would argue this community is at the top of the heap. The services, safety, schools, I mean, right down the line. Mm -hmm. and, and with libraries, veteran services, senior center, um, you know, rubbish pickup. I mean, this city has great services. People expect it. I think we deliver them well. I'm not saying everything is perfect. Uh, nothing is ever perfect. But uh, so you get a lot of bang for your buck in this city. Mm -hmm. We have leveraged federal and state dollars uh, to match the local dollars to do the, a number of the uh, public improvements and investments and in infrastructure that we've seen. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're an old city with a lot of old infrastructure. We've got to continue to do that. Yeah, it's been kind of your theme for uh, State of the City addresses, certainly, is infrastructure, um, public services, and education. Absolutely. That seems to be the cornerstone. And I'm proud of the progress in all those areas. Yeah. Uh, there's always more to do. Don't get me wrong. There's always new challenges. Um, you know, there's things that happen in many days. I, I joke about it. We. I go to the office and you and you hope to drive the day, but there's issues that pop up that that drive you, that right? Drive me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes drive me crazy, <laughs> but uh, but all good. I mean, uh, again, we're in a great city. We're in a good place. We've got good relationships with our colleagues. Um, you know, I enjoy working with the council and school committee, mm. our state delegation with Ron Mariano, Bruce Ayers, and Tacky, Dan Hunt, and of course Senator Keenan. Uh, they're phenomenal. Um, you know, our Congressman Steve Lynch is. You know, we talk on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. The governor I was with the lieutenant governor last night uh, on a regular basis talking and texting. Uh, they've been great partners, and, and that's the beauty of it. They look at it as a partnership. We're not, we're not this uh, you know, little, little town begging for help. Mm. This is a partnership where we're all in it together, and each of us have a role to deliver these services. Mm -hmm. Will any of them be at the uh, inaugural on Monday? Uh, I believe a congressman is coming uh, to the evening event. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not really sure. I even looked at the list okay. about Monday. I get to get started on my speech, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably have it already written out in your head, at least. Well, um, I certainly have it um, kind of outlined, I guess, yeah. in my head. I got to put it to paper. Is there a paper, the overall so. theme? Do you think it'll be about uh, it'll be about going forward. Okay. It's, um, you know, we've we've got a lot of things done, and I and I. I guess, you know, you mentioned that, you pause, you do look back over the last 10, 12 years, and, uh, you know, we, we came in at a time that was uh, not very good, you know, as far as finances in the world. The Great Recession, right? The Great Recession. Yeah. And I think we come out of that pretty strong, uh, very stable, mm -hmm. you know, and I look today and, uh, and our uh, bond rating is up, our reserves are up, you know, I look at the schools where, you know, our test scores are up, our graduation rates are up. Mm. I look at our, our safety side, the FBI crime stats, the crime is down. Uh, use of library books is up, use mm -hmm. of parks is up. I mean, it, you know, all the numbers are going in the right direction. Uh, and, I'm, you know, it's dangerous to bring these up because next year they could go in another direction. Well, right. But, yeah. um, you know, we're a safe city. Uh, we have uh, incredible dedicated people running our schools. The teachers do an incredible job. Uh, you know, and I've often said after public safety, you know, police and fire are phenomenal in the city. So professional. Uh, you know, they show great compassion when they serve in the public. Uh, exp you know, response time is, is as bad as good as it's ever been mm -hmm. in the city. And, uh, but there's nothing more we, important we do after that than educating our young people, and I think we're doing very well. Uh, the state's been in a number of times using our programs as models Is that right? around the state. So I'm proud of our superintendent and the whole team there, with, along with our teaching staff, just doing incredible work. But there's a lot of other departments that are great missions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're in here at the studio, which is attached to the library. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I tell you, uh, you know, you look at constituencies and, and what's important to people. The library constituency, they love their libraries. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, They're dedicated. You know, they sure. don't care yeah. about other things necessarily. <laughs> they want their library and their yeah. services. And, and I get it. You know, and that could be said of a, a number of the various departments that have different missions. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all one city. We come together mm. uh, as one city, providing the best services we possibly can. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. So I'm proud of my department heads, the work they do, our employees that put in line every day, and uh, what a privilege it is to, to lead that effort on a daily basis. If there's one thing that you definitely want to accomplish before the end of your next four-year term, what would that be? One thing? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I, I, you know, my wife always says to me, you talk too much about the downtown. You know, talk about other things. Okay. Like, well, we, you know, we've, we've done Quincy High, we've done Central, we've done um, the new Southwest. Yep. We're working on Squanum. Uh, you know, we're doing sea walls, we're doing roads, we're doing pipes. So every neighborhood's being touched in many ways. Uh, downtown gets talked about uh, more often because I'm asked about it probably mm -hmm. more often. Mm -hmm. uh, but in that, in that vein, along with your question there, uh, to get the downtown further along, okay. uh, I think we're probably a quarter of the way in. I hope that, really? um, you know, that we're two-thirds through in the next four years. I think the medical center... Yes. The hotel, the garage, some more residential building. It's my hope that uh, all those will be open uh, by the end of this next term. Of course, hopefully the Squantum School will be well underway and a lot of other things happening sure. uh, throughout the city. The General's Bridge, uh, you know, as soon as we have a date targeted on that, um, had a chance to sit with uh, General Dunford for lunch recently, and he's now in his retirement after being chair of the Joint Chiefs, and we talked about the bridge and how I'm going to need his help a little bit for some guidance and protocol. and. Uh, oh, with, for, a you know, with, for the dedication yeah. purposes. So as soon as we get a better number or timetable with uh, Mass Dot, yeah. then we'll begin planning because that's going to be a major event that will rival the Hancock Adams Common dedication. Okay. Right. There'll be people flying all over from all over the country mm -hmm. to come in to um, to honor Dunford, to honor McConville, Sullivan, Sweeney. Um, you know, the whole will, bunch of them. Will I mean, there be statues like Ronald the, Rand? Common, we're, we're going through that now. We're okay. going through a. Uh, there's the bridge portion, which yep. the names will be on. And it'll be a handsome bridge, and then we're going to have a park right right by there okay. uh, that we're going to be honoring the individuals and telling their story a bit. We're still trying to figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, so there could be some statuary, um, uh, definitely some um, you know water elements and beautiful park features. One of the um, I guess concerns or. Uh, t talked about issues at least is the mix of residential to commercial mm -hmm. and and how to how to balance that and to make sure you have a good good uh, mix of both basically well that's that's why I'm excited about the 200,000 square foot Brigham Women's South Shore Medical yeah. facility that's commercial that's okay. good jobs it's bringing back medical services to people of the city and that will lead to what I believe is a lot more commercial I think that you'll see the the biotech life science start to really come together in gel and Quincy Brigham Woman is a big name in, oh, the, yeah. in the medical industry uh, worldwide, yep. uh, and uh, I think there'll be some great companies following them. Um, the world and the retail continues to change, as we know, and continue to evolve. My wife talks about that. When are you going to get some good stores? Uh, well, you're, you're combating <laughs> even the plaza and the malls are oh. dealing with that issue now because sure. of this, the online shopping. Yep. It's a whole different world. Uh, the, d the days of the old Sears catalog uh, and Sears robot Did case, you ever think over, you'd see the day, you know? but yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's amazing. But as this goes forward, uh, as it continues to get built out, you're going to have a lot of people working here, uh, making good salaries. So I think you will see that. Some retail, some more restaurants, some entertainment use uh, continue to evolve as part of the whole new program here. Any... New Year's resolutions, Mayor, do you do that, either personally or professionally? Well, I, I, I do. Yeah. I, um, one is, uh, we all do it, I guess, is, is the diet issue. Uh, I got a head start, so I'm working on that. Uh, got a little ways to go. I'd like to go another 10 or 15 pounds, quite frankly. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's always the things we challenge ourselves. Yeah. I mean, a, uh, you know, my, my spiritual life's important to me, and, 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 and out of that, uh, how patient am I? How do I treat others? Oh. Uh, how do I look at things uh, from other people's perspectives, mm -hmm. not just my own? So those things I, I take to heart and uh, try to improve on. Do you still have the photo of the family who was affected by the opioid crisis on your desk when you first I have I have that in my drawer. You do? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and uh, I think about all of those families um, on a regular basis because I've known a number of them personally. Right. Uh, who've been affected, um, you know, and, and that continues to evolve. It just just seems when we try to make some progress, uh, you you know, that the issue pops up uh, in so many other ways. It, this this issue manifests itself in so many different ways, so many different drugs, 
uh, you know, and, and again, my colleagues, the governor's been great. Senator Keene has been in the forefront mm -hmm. of this. No question. An yep. Incredible job with some of the legislation. Many predicted none of that legislation would have passed that right. he, he ushered through. So we've got to continue to working it, working hard on it together. Um, you know, I never, if you go back 10 years, you wouldn't even dream of some of the programs we're doing in the schools today uh, as part of this. The younger we can get to our kids to realize, to make good choices, that these choices that they, they could make could end their life, number mm -hmm. one, or drastically change their life going forward. Uh, so we've got to continue to work the issue um, and continue to keep in mind those families that have been affected and pray to God that fewer families get affected. I want to wish you a happy early birthday uh, and a very happy, healthy uh, new year. And thank you for coming over, Mayor. My pleasure, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate the phone calls on Tuesday morning <laughs> and catch up on items. But happy new to you and certainly to all our uh, folks watching here on QA TV. Thanks again, Mayor. Just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get out there. A scattered shower. Pretty mild, though, up around 50 degrees. Kind of nice for early January. A little uh, unsettled this evening. Temperatures drop off into the lower 40s. Look out for some rain tomorrow afternoon and night. So bundle up out at uh, Gillette. Pretty nice on Sunday and still pretty quiet here on Monday. Thanks again to Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch for joining us today on the program. Go Patriots. <laughs> Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. Monday at 1130, Janet Little's here from the Quincy Winter Farmers Market for the first time this year on another edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.